Hi, I'm Frédéric Desbiens. If I asked you which Eclipse technology is the most widely used in the world, what would you say? Well, maybe you would say Jakarta AE, which is very popular, but you know, even with the tons of servers running it, that's barely a few million copies in the wild at this point in time. Some other people would say maybe Eclipse IDE, and Eclipse IDE is downloaded 6 million times a year, so of course it's bound to have millions of copies in the wild. But even that is, well, a bit on the low side, I would say. Then in more recent projects, maybe you would say that Eclipse Tamarin, our open JDK implementation, is uh, highly downloaded and must be the most popular project. And yes, there are a few billion copies of Tamarin, and of course, if you consider the broader Java ecosystem, you would say that, yeah, there are billions of devices running Java. But, uh, well, if we target, of course, the embedded and IoT space, then the Java story uh, is not necessarily playing out well in that space. So, anyway, all of this to say, all of those could have been answers, but the true answer to that question is something you wouldn't expect. And the true answer to that question is Eclipse ThreadX. Eclipse ThreadX is the first open source real-time operating system certified for safety critical applications. And we'll ask, okay, this is the most widely used Eclipse project, so how many installs, how many devices, because we're speaking of course about embedded technologies, so how many devices are running it? And up to now, there's been 12 billion devices worldwide running ThreadX, going all the way from fitness trackers to thermostats, phones and tablets, and of course, printers and even space probes. Okay, so that's 12 billion just for the core set of technologies. And you can probably add a few billion more if you consider devices that use just part of the stack. So all in all, it's quite a successful project. Now you will ask me, how come I never heard it? Well, <laughs> there's an history there. But first, okay, uh, if you're not familiar with that space, let's ask ourselves what is a real-time operating system. And a real-time OS is simply system software that manages resources in highly constrained applications. And this includes processor cycles, peripherals, interrupts, things like that. And really, the main goal there is to allocate processing times to the various threads, the various um, tasks that are running at any single time on an embedded platform. So when you look at the characteristics of real-time operating systems, typically they are small and fast, they have a dedicated purpose, and they will be at their best when you have deterministic processing requirements. In other words, if you need to guarantee latency in your application for whatever reason, then uh, RTOS is a good fit. And uh, most RTOSs can target very constrained environments. So a typical microcontroller with 500 kilobytes of memory running at less than 200 megahertz, 32 bit. And of course, um, you know, if you have a memory management unit, that's fine, but it's not necessarily required. So cheap, affordable, uh, powerful in their own way, but uh, deeply embedded platforms are the typical target for a real time operating system. And so uh, ThreadX is deployed in tons of devices. And the reason why you never heard about it is that it simply became an Eclipse project last year. So the story there is that initially ThreadX was a commercial product from ExpressLogic that has been acquired by Microsoft in 2019. And they tried to build a business around it for a number of years until they realized that Maybe they weren't as successful as they wanted or whatever you ask Microsoft, I don't know. But whatever the reason, they decided in 2023 to contribute this to the Eclipse Foundation. And now ThreadX is known as Eclipse ThreadX, available on GitHub under the MIT license. So it's still fairly new in terms of Eclipse projects. And this is maybe why you didn't hear about it until now. Now, when you look at ThreadX, it's not just the core kernel that we've got there, of course, ThreadX as a kernel is a high performance real-time OS. There's an SMP version if you have multiple cores in your uh, SOC or MCU. But then there are uh, neighboring or companion components that you can leverage. And you can use them on the ThreadX kernel, but you can leverage them independently on other kernels uh, as needed. 
the star of the show is, of course, NetX Duo, which is an IPv4 v6 network stack with support for TLS and DTLS. We also have FileX, an embedded file system, GUIX, a set of widgets and a runtime, USBX uh, for USB support, and TraceX as a companion tool to instrument in real time your applications. So, the nice thing about TradeX is that most of the components I talked about are certified for safety critical applications. So there's a number of standards, including ISO 26.26.2, um, for which we reached certification for TradeX. Uh, TradeX is also compliant, it's written in C, so it's compliant with all the required and mandatory rules in MISRA C 2004 and 2012. And it's been certified for use uh, in home appliances by UL. So you will probably find it in your neighborhood a dishwasher, washing machine, and or microwave. So looking uh, uh, a bit closer at the various components, TradeX is very, very small. It can be as small as two kilobytes and at the same time delivers sub microsecond context switches. And really what's nice about it is that it also includes the notion of modules with memory protection. So if you need to uh, really, really um, have um, protected parts of the application to ensure that data is not corrupted, then uh, TradeX can do this, of course, for you. Then there's NetX Duo. Uh, NetX Duo, as I uh, told you, is a fully featured IPv4, IPv6 network stack. It can be uh, as small as 50 kilobytes. And, uh, you know, there's been extensive security testing around it. Uh, one very nifty thing about it is that internally it uses zero copy, uh, so it will really use a minimal amount of resources at runtime. And so TradeX uh, and NetX Duo are decoupled, but go very well, of course, together and will support a variety of networking interfaces like Wi-Fi, cellular, and Ethernet. FileX is an implementation of uh, the FAT a file system, so you can use FAT12, 16, or 32. And uh, one nice thing about it is that if you are leveraging flash storage, then there's an optional component in there called LevelX, and LevelX will ensure that um, the workload is spread over the whole uh, flash chip, not just in specific sectors. So this ensures that your flash storage will last longer in the wild. There's also USB-X uh, with uh, support for host and device uh, application. And really, uh, it supports a broad array of classes that you see mentioned on the slide. So uh, it's really a nicely done uh, stack and uh, four devices can be as small as 8.5 kilobyte and for hosts, as small as 12 kilobytes. Finally, there's GUIX. GUIX is a set of widgets and a runtime uh, to write uh, user interfaces with even graphics acceleration. Um, we also have a WYSIWYG design tool that you can install for the time being, unfortunately, only on Windows machines, but you see the screenshots there. And this uh, will generate for you the code to integrate GUIX in your TradeX application. Of course, uh, you can paste that uh, in other types of environments as well. So one thing worth mentioning about TradeX is that it's also very high performance. In fact, in a recently published study, uh, TradeX has been recognized as the fastest open source RTOS in the market. So please have a look at the detailed study. Uh, the test suite that they've been using is open source, so you can replicate the findings for yourself. And so if you are interested in TradeX and want to support it or uh, really uh, come to us and purchase our safety artifacts to build safety certified products and devices on the top of TradeX, then you should join the TradeX Alliance at tradexalliance.org. And my call to action if you are interested in TradeX uh, really is uh, first, well, uh, to get the code. It's on GitHub. Uh, there's a variety of repos over there. Of course, the docs are on GitHub as well in a specific repository, and you will find documentation for various versions of the stack. Uh, you can stay informed by subscribing to our main TradeX mailing list. And of course, uh, if you want to support this initiative, you can join the TradeX Alliance. So um, if you're into the mood for coding, 
uh, and C coding in real time OS environments is uh, something uh, tricky a bit, but at the same time re very rewarding, then of course we are always looking for contributors and even committers. And uh, please get in touch with me if you're interested. So uh, if you have a focus on ST micro types of environments, there's also this recently published book that can provide you a few pointers over there by leveraging the stm 32 q tools and uh, Eclipse Threadx. It's been published in August 2024. So thank you for watching this short introduction to Threadx. You can reach me at threadx-info at eclipse.org. Thanks.